بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وبارك على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد الحمد لله we continue by going on to discuss some of the points mentioned by Sheikh Al-Islam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab, explained by Sheikh Al-Sheikh Uzaid ibn Muhammad ibn Hadi al And the next point we want to discuss is the Anwa al ibadah right? the forms, the types of ibadah. The Anwa al ibadah and the Amr Allah biha. What are the types of ibadah which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded with? Shaykh Zayn rahimahullah, he begins by mentioning uh, the definition for ibadah. He mentioned the definition for ibadah, which is the definition of Shaykh Islam Ibn Taymiyyah. Where he mentions that ibadah is the ism jam in the kulima yuhibbuhu Allah wa yarda min a'mal al-zahir wal batila. And so ibadah is a comprehensive term for everything that Allah loves and is pleased with from actions which are apparent or within that are hidden. فَيَدْكُلْ فِي هَذَا تَعْرِيفِ كُلُّ عِبَادَةٍ يَبْتَعِدْ بِهَا مُكَلَّفُونَ مِنَ عِبَادَاتِ الَّتِي يَجِبْ عَنْ يُسْرَفْ لِلَّهِ وَحْدَهُ And so that which is part of this definition of ibadah a part of that which is understood from Ibadah is the actions, and the actions that draw a person nearer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the actions of the mukallafun, and those who are responsible for those actions, for what they do, and that they are an obligation that they be directed towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. وذكر المؤلف مثالا ونموذجا من أنواع العبادات فقال مثل الإسلام والإيمان وإحسان And so the author mentions I had a form of ibadah and the example being Islam Iman and Ihsan مثل الإسلام والإيمان وإحسان وهذه هي مراتب الدين كما في حديث جبريل عليه السلام مشهور وهو ما وراه عمر بن الخطاب رضي الله عنه فقال so these مراتب الدين these levels of deen which are Islam Iman and Ihsan and all of them are regarded as being ibadah they are what is the مراتب the levels of deen that are mentioned by Ibn Khattab, uh, Umar ibn Khattab or Jibreel rather in the hadith of Umar ibn Khattab, where he mentions, we were all sitting in the Prophet Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that day. I was sitting with the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that day. If tala alayna rajla shadeed al-biyad al-thiyab, shadeed al-sawad al-sha'ar, la yira alayhi afdur al-safr, wa la ya'arifu minna ahad, hata jalasa ila al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, فأسدل ركبتيه إلى ركبتيه وضع كفيه إلى فخذه And so we were sitting with the message of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم that day and a man came with a brilliant white thong completely black hair and none of us saw any effect or any remnants of traveling upon him. And none of us knew him. Until he sat with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he faced his knees to his knees. And placed his hands upon his thighs. He said, Oh Muhammad, inform me about Islam. 
فقال الإسلام أن تشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأن محمد رسول الله وتقيم الصلاة وتؤتي الزكاة وتصوم رمضان وتحج البيت إن استطعت إن استطعت إليه سبيلا. So Mr. Islam, to bear witness that there's no deity worthy of worship besides Allah, and that Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah, that you establish the prayer, you give the zakah, you fast around for Ramadan, you perform the hajj to the house of Allah, qala sadaqt. Qala al-rawi, qala al-rawi, fa'ajabna lahu, yas'aluhu, yas'adniku. As the narrator stated, <coughs> after... Jibreel mentioned, and it's adapt, and you spoke the truth. The narrator mentioned, and so thus we were amazed that he's asking him, and then he mentions that he's telling the truth. God, for Akbarani and Iman, God, I'm talking to Billahi, when we're like, we're going to be a Russian, when you're in Akhir, we're talking to because we're Khairi, he's Sharri, God, I said, I could. He had informed me about Iman. He says, I'm believed to believe in Allah, to believe in Allah, the angels, the books, the messengers, the final day, to believe in the cause of the good of it and the bad of it. He said that, and he said, you spoke the truth. Qal faqbirni an al ihsan. Informed by ihsan. Qal an ta'budu Allah ka anna ka tarah. Fa ilam tukun tarahu fa innuhu yarak. Animations. I inform me about Ihsan. Inform me about Ihsan. Yes, that is to worship Allah as if you see him. But indeed you don't see him, but he sees you. Qafakbiri and the sa'a. So then inform me about the hour. Qama Mas'ul Anha bi a'lam min al-sa'il. He said, the one that has been asked does not know more than the questioner. قال أخبرني عن أماراتها قال دين inform me of its signs قال أن تلد لما تربتها وأن ترى حلفاء وراء الآلة وراء الشاء يتطولون في البنيان and he mentions that the slave girl would give birth to her master and that you will see the barefoot the barefooted shepherds Competing with one another, a building of two buildings. Thumin Saraf, for Qara Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Tajdi man, Ya'umar, man is sa'in, and then the man left. And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Oh, Umar, do you know who the sa'in was? Who was the question that was? Kuta Allah wa Rasulhu A'lam. He said, Allah and his messenger knows best. Qara Hala Jibreel, alayhi salam. Ataakum, ya'alakum, ya'alimukum, deenukum. I said, This is Jibreel. He came to you to teach you the affair of your religion. فَتَبْرَى النَّبِيَ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ هَذِ بَرَاتِبُ الثَّلَاثِ And so the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم regarded this, these as being the three levels of deen. Islam, Iman, and Islam. And this is the deen in totality. When the tafasil has the baratib, la bul bil bayan. And when it comes to the details of these, of each of these levels, then there has to be clarity with it. Bayan al-Qar al-Islam, bayan al-Qar al-Iman, bayan al-Qar al-Ihsan. So there must be detail when it comes to the levels of Islam, levels of Iman, the levels on the, on the, on the, the pillars of Ihsan. What have you called? كتبت فيها كتابة مقتصرة واضحة على طريقة السؤال والجواب ضمن البحوث في السلسلة العجبة السديدة and this I read these uh, these pillars you find that there have been texts written on them I saw concise texts where they seek to clarify what these pillars are and the details of the pillars of Islam, the pillars of Iman, the pillars of Ihsan. And that it's inclusive of, inclusive of that are yeah, the questions and answers.
Now, and so from that, you have the second question. Mahil ibada, wa man mukallif bada'uha. Yani, who, what is the ibadah and who is the one that is responsible in order to fulfill this ibadah? As we mentioned, uh, ibadah is the ism jami' likulli ma yuhibbuhu Allah wa yarza min akwaan wa af'al wa a'mal al-zahiba wa al-batila. So in terms of ibadah and its definition, ibadah, the, the, what it means, then ibadah is a, is a comprehensive term for everything that Allah Ta'ala loves, is pleased with, from speech, actions, whether that, uh, whether that be from the actions which are apparent or that the actions from that which are within or hidden. Now, now, and so as for the one that's mukallaf, as for the one that is responsible and that is upon them to establish an ibadah, then this is from every single individual which is aqil, alim, or aqil, but the alim in So the one that has sound mind from the creation of the ins, the mankind, and the jinn. As Allah Ta'ala states, We keep our salat to the Mukhrisin and the Huddin and the Hunafa, we keep our salat to the Zakah, and that is the Deen of the Qayyima. And they will not come out except to worship Allah sincerely for Him in the religion. Hunafa, and upon the religion, the Hanifiyah, the Billah of Ibrahim, establishing the prayer and giving the Zakah, and that is the upright religion. وَيَلِيهِ يَسْسُعَالَ الثَّالِفِ وَنَصُّهُ مَا هُوَ التَّوْهِيدِ وَكَمْ عَنْوَاعُهُ وَمَا جَزَاءَ مَنْ حَقَّقَهُ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ That's so we have the next question, which is, what is Tawheed itself? And how many forms are there? How many types of Tawheed are there? And what is the reward for the one that establishes Tawheed and makes this affair of Tawheed manifest? In this life and the akhirah. What is their rule in this life and the akhirah? Mm-hmm. And so, Tawheed in his definition, وَإِفْرَادُ اللَّهِ بِعِبَادَةِ وَخُلُوصِ لَهُ مِنَ الشِّرْكِ كَبِيرُهُ وَصِغِيرُهُ قَلِيلُهُ وَكَثِيرُهُ وَبَرَاءَ مِنْهُ وَمِنْ أَهْلِهِ So the first thing is that is signal Allah Ta'ala alone in the ibadah. And one free oneself from a shirk. Whether that be the major form or minor form. Whether that be shirk in small amounts or large amounts. Whilst one frees himself from it and from its people. Come on, call Subhanahu. قُلْ إِنَّ صَلَاتِ وَنُسُكِ وَحْيَايَ وَمَمَاتِ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ لَا شَرِيكَ لَهُ وَبِذَلِكَ وَمِرْتُ وَعَنَا أَوَّلَ مُسْلِمِينَ As I say, indeed, my prayer, and my slaughtering, my living and my death, it's for Allah, the Lord of all creation. With no partners, and that which I've been that which I've been commanded, but I have to say I'm not a first, I'm amongst the Muslims. Now and so the anwa of Tawheed, the types of Tawheed, the forms of Tawheed are three. The first of them being the Tawheed al Uluhiyah. The second, Tawheed al Ruhubiyah mentioned here, Tawheed, Nasmawa Sifat. And in the last lesson we mentioned Tawheed as two categories. I don't remember what they were, but we mentioned them as two categories. Our actions and Allah's actions. Our actions and Allah's actions. Not, not necessarily that. No, no. Ma'rifa. Now I'm talking Ma'rifa. Or Ithbat. So the first one was Tawheed. Ma'rifa. Well, Ithbat. Which essentially is, yeah, they what? Rububiyya <coughs> and Asma'wa Sifat. So, Tawheed, Ma'rifah, Ruhifah, so the Tawheed, to have knowledge and affirmation. 
So it's upon us have knowledge and affirmation of these things. I have knowledge and affirmation of the rubri of Allah, al af'al of Allah, the actions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the that of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah ta'ala is existence. Have knowledge of them. Well, if that, Allah is upon us to affirm these things as well. And affirm our belief in these things. No doubt, inclusive of that is the rububiyyah, the af'al of Allah, and the asma wa sifat of Allah, the days and attributes of Allah. This is the first one we're talking about, guys. This is the second. Is talab wal qast. The second being the tawheed talab wal qast. And this essentially is Vishnu tawheed. Tawheed al so this being the Tawheed and Uluhiyah. This is essentially being the Tawheed and Uluhiyah. The Tawheed of the worship. Tawheed of the worship. And so here, no doubt that which is Ma'ruf, well known as the, are the three types of Tawheed, Uluhiyah, Uluhiyah, Asma, wa Sifat. And then the mentioned as two as well. Now, as for the Tawheed al I mentioned this one first. The Tawheed al is ifrad, wa huwa ikrar bi anna Allah al khaliq al raziq al muhi al mumit al mudabbir al jami al umur. Al mutasarrif fi qawm, kullahu la yus'al amma yaf'al wa hum yus'alun. And so, Tawheed al-Rububiyya is the acknowledgement. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, an affirmation, a personal affirmation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator. He's the one that sustains, gives life, brings about death, disposes of all of the affairs of the creation. He's the one that has charge of all the affairs of the creation. And so, he is not asked. Naam, Allah is not asked about what is done within the creation. Rather, the creation themselves are us. They're responsible. Um yus'alu. Then we have Tawheed and Uluhiyah. Naam. We have Tawheed and Uluhiyah, which is signal Allah Ta'ala alone in all forms of ibadah, which have been mentioned and the Sheikh Islam Muhammad Abdul Wahab mentions examples of them. We will, we will go through some examples of the different forms of ibadah. And they have Tawheed as well, which he found. Wula itikad al jazib anna Allah, or anna lillahi asma al husna, wa sifat al ula, wa ifbatuha min al ghayri taharif, wa la ta'ati, wa min al ghayri tashbih, wa la taqhif. ولا تمثيل بل نقول كما قال الله تعالى ليس كمثله شيء وهو السميع البصير. And so it's the etiquette, it's the it's the absolute belief that Allah subhanahu wa taala has beautiful names and lofty attributes. And affirming these names. Without them being distorted or rejected or compared or asked how. Rather, we understand the names and attributes of Allah based upon the ayah. Laysa kamifli hi shay wa huwa sami al basir. This ayah here, barakallahu fikum. Laysa kamifli hi shay wa huwa sami al basir. This ayah in of itself is a qaida. It's a qaida fi asma'i wa sifat. Is a principle in asma wa sifat. The principle being that there's nothing like unto Allah. There's nothing like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala within this, within this ayah informs us that there's nothing like unto him. There's nothing like him. Thereafter, he goes on to affirm two of his beautiful names, As-Samir and Al-Musir. Within that, also affirming the attributes of As-Samir wal basir Affirming the attributes of hearing and hearing in a manner which befits his majesty and seeing in a basr and, and seeing in a manner which befits his majesty 
And so we understand from this ayah, not only is this a statement of haq, naam, there is a complete shay. However, it's a qaida, it establishes a qaida from the qawaid of asma wa sifat. It establishes a principle when it comes to the principle of asma wa sifat. There's nothing like unto him. And then as mentioned, thereafter Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala affirms some of these names and his attributes. Now, so as you mentioned, uh, as the Sheikh Zayn mentions, uh, there's a jaza, there's a reward for the one that establishes this affair of Tawheed. And he mentioned there's a reward in the dunya and a reward in the akhirah. وَأَمَّا الْجَزَاءَ عَلَى التَّوْحِيدِ فِي الدُّنْيَا فَهُوَ عِسْمَةِ الدَّمِ وَالْمَالِ وَالْإِرْضِ وَحَيَاتِ الْعَمَلِ وَتَمَأْنِينَ As for the reward of the dunya, then the person is or has protection when it comes to his blood, wealth, honor, and a life of security. So he has a life of security and tranquility. Now due to the fact that, no doubt, the one that establishes Tawheed and the one that affirms that he's upon Tawheed, I am Muslim, then we understand that there is Isma, and it's protection, and it is guarded, the blood of the Muslim. So the blood of the Muslim becomes haram. So as soon as a person affirms, I told him for themselves, I entered into Islam, their blood is haram. Their wealth is haram. Their honor is haram. Now, as so due to that, a person, of course, lives a life of tranquility. Because if you know now that due to that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has laid down by way of legislation, these things are now haram upon others, then of course this increases your security. If you know that it's not a matter or it's not an amr hayyim, it's not a small affair for someone to spill your blood, of course, it increases your security. If you know that your wealth is protected, it increases your security. And likewise, honor no, is no different. I, the honor of the Muslim is one which is sacred, and one which is protected. And so, when the person's honor is protected, that he's aware, or is well aware, that because of that protection, it increases him in security as well. So this is the jaza of this is the reward of Prophet Muhammad Tawheed in the dunya. As for the akhirah, now then the reward in the akhirah is Rida Allah wal Jannah. And a person earns the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Jannah. And a person likewise, he is saved from the displeasure of Allah and the fire. And therefore, وَذَلِكْ هُوَ الْفَوْزُ الْعَلِيمُ And likewise, above all else, is that one is able to look towards the face of Allah and the noble face of Allah to Allah wa ta'ala. And this is the reward of one upon Tawheed. And this is a reward, a reward no doubt, which is عَظِيمُ I is a, a magnificent reward for the believers. In which the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam narrates and he mentions those that will enter Jannah and the reward of those that will enter Jannah and they are shown their rewards. And Allah ta'ala will ask them is there anything more that we can give you? And the response of the people of Jannah will be that you have saved us from the fire. You've entered us into Jannah. And you have saved us from the fire. And so, essentially, there's nothing more that we are that we can want from you. And nothing more that they believe they can ask from Allah. Wa 
And thereafter, he, subhanahu wa ta'ala, removes the veil. And at that moment, they are able to see the face of Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala. And this is the greatest of the rewards that is put as placed before the believers. When they enter Jannah. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it makes us from those that achieve that reward. And no doubt that reward occurs when the individual establishes the affair of Tawheed. The individual, he makes the affair of Tawheed manifest within his life. So no doubt you have the reward of the dunya, the isma, the protection, and the reward of the akhira, the jannah, the protection, the, the the fact that Allah Taala, the salvation, the fact that Allah Taala saves you from the fire, and the greatest reward of his face being unveiled and revealed to the individuals and to the believers. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. And so, here the Mu'allif, the author mentions the Maratib al deen the levels of deen, Islam, Iman al-Ihsan, as mentioned in the hadith of Jibreel. And Shaykh mentions that the Talib al ilm is in need of knowing these arkan, knowing these pillars. When it comes to Iman, Islam, Iman, and Islam, knowing these pillars in great detail. And this is the reality of these pillars. I'm in the Ta'ala. In our next lesson, we'll go on to discuss some of them in a bit more detail. Like some of these pillars. As mentioned in uh, the hadith of Jibreel, the pillars of Islam, the pillars of Iman, and the pillars of Ihsan. Essentially, before we begin, before we begin in that next in our next lesson of discussing them, one clear distinction that, that is made is that Islam and Iman is mentioned upon the ta'rif if they ishtama or if taraka ishtama. Yani, if they are mentioned together, then they have separate definition. If they are mentioned separately, then they have the same definition. Either they encompass it one another. So the fact that Islam and Iman are mentioned here together, then their definitions are different. So the fact that Islam and Iman are mentioned here together, then the definitions are different. Islam, being under, we understand Islam to be the a'mal and the actions of the jawarih and the lisan, the actions that are, that are from the, the limbs and the tongue. Whilst Iman are, are the actions or the etiquad of the of the kulub in nas. Yeah, and the etiquad, the, the creed that the person has and what the person believes in. And essentially, this is a clear distinction between the two. Um, and inshallah, we'll mention them in more detail in our next lesson. Jazakallah khair, ikhwah, barakallah, fiqh. Jazakallah khair for your patience as well. Apologies for the late begin, uh, start. Bindi light, and this week we will begin on time and uh, begin uh, with these detailed discussion around the pillars of Islam and Iman. Sakhmullah khaira wa barakullah fiqa wa sallallahu wa barak ala nabi Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.